This is a video released three months ago. It's called Alex Asks Tom Personal Questions About Prison. Now, I know roughly where all the interesting stuff is, but we're going to we're gonna let it play. I'm going to try and milk it a bit. If it gets too boring, I'll skip. But we will do it on 1.5. Tom says some wild stuff in this video. i got to be real. Uh, there's no way of verifying almost any of it. <laughs> and uh, you guys are going to... I think you guys are going to get a kick out of this one. It is very funny. All right. Style prison, so everything had to be like, sir, yes, sir. We had to make our beds in a certain way. We had to polish our boots. We had to like... What the our... fuck? No, that, 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 I'm, just, I'm just kind of remarking on how crazy that is. What in the world did you do to get sent to that prison? Um, you have to lift up your penis, then lift up your ball sack. Um, oh they, like, they like squat down and like get really close with a with a freaking flashlight pointing at you. And then you turn around, bend over, spread your cheeks, and then cough twice. Um, and that makes you like your bubble. You you no, I'm not. No, I'm not. I'm telling you, we had to do this every day. You had to turn around. I start to lift up my hand to cover my mouth so I don't sneeze. And literally the second I move my hand, he grabs me around my neck and picks me up off the ground by my neck, like in a chokehold. Commotion starts breaking out everywhere. Like I hear everybody screaming and yelling and there's like, you know, pushing and all sorts of stuff. They start to hear like banging on the other doors. The other inmates are literally trying to break down the door now. Like bust my head, hit my knees first, like shattered my kneecap, sprained my other knee. I got like blood like coming out of my head and I'm like laying there with like blood like flowing into my mouth. And so they, they grab me by the cuffs and drag me over behind the counter. Yes, I was screaming bloody murder, dude. And you can see my kneecap is like all mangled. You can see it. So, yeah. Oh, is this a crazy story, guys? Isn't this, a, isn't this crazy? Dude, that was one of the fucking craziest stories I've heard in a long time. Like, I agree, Alex. Like, wasn't that crazy? Uh, it's like a movie. Yeah, yeah I think... I, I think, like, even moving... I, I lived in New York, right? I grew up in, like, the ghetto. I initially went to an all-black school, an all-black church, uh, lived in an all-black neighborhood. I, Life uh, is like a video it, it game. Was a culture shock to move to Georgia, where... It was just insanely different. Like, it's not like there aren't, like, black and brown people around, but I went from being a minority to being, like, by far the majority. Um, I went from, like, saying the N-word just because everybody said the freaking N-word in New York to, like, white people getting insanely offended that I said the N-word and, like, finding out that, like, I'm not supposed to say it because I'm white. Like, the cultures that you grow up in and the way that you're socialized right. early on, these things are really going... Bro. <laughs> what was that? Sorry? Like, it's not like there aren't, like, black and brown people around, but I went from being a minority to being, like, by far the majority. Um, I went from, like, saying the N-word just because everybody said the freaking N-word in New York to, like, white people getting insanely offended that I said the N-word and, like, finding out that, like, I'm not supposed to say it because I'm white. Like, the cultures that you grow up in and the way that you're... Oh, uh, Tom, was, Tom was that wigger. He was that wigger. He was invited to the cookout. Man, that guy... Dudes. He's actually doing the, yeah, I said the N word and, and the black people respect, the blacks respected me. They, they respected the white man for having the bravery to say the N word around them. <laughs> Full pass holder. <laughs> Socialized early on. These things are really going to change the way that you view things. But yeah, course, with that said, I still ended up like being kind of far right and uh, pretty racist early on. <laughs> far right? I thought you were more towards the left. I, I'm oh, saying, like, I, I used to, yeah, I used to, like, yeah. When I first so this has changed. He, he claimed, the other day, he said he was never far right, but he was a neocon. He said he wasn't racist. He wasn't far right. He was a neocon. Now he's saying he, he was far right. Podcast. That's why, like, my initial entry into content creation. Um, I was definitely kind of, what do you call it? Uh, like, I wasn't alt-right, but I liked Richard Spencer. I liked Gavin McGinnis. Um, I liked Stephen Molyneux. Um, mm-hmm. That's, yeah, that's these are like uh, these are all like the main people I watched. Sorry, yeah, that's, that's interesting. So how do you then like that's? I mean, Richard Spencer is like pretty fucking far right. Like you know, it's like that's like that's pretty much as right. So how did you switch over and like how do you transition to being like? I win. The left? That's, like, they that's, lose. That's how um, the world. <laughs> it it kind of started with Trump getting elected. I I looked at Trump as just like one of the dumbest people I'd ever seen. Uh. <laughs> Like, Dude, I, I could love... not believe that my people were voting All those for people, such a actually. stupid person who could barely put a freaking sentence together. Like, somebody who didn't... Gavin McInnes, Stefan Molyneux, and what was going on, Richard Spencer, they all have such great moments. Like, I'm just thinking, like, I'm just taking a moment to think about these amazing moments. Like, what's Gavin McInnes done? He had... He shoved that dildo up his ass on camera. He had that debate with Destiny. Was that the same one? Was that the dildo one? Or was that the one where you just screamed at him? 
He had all the copper cab stuff. Made that with Milo. <laughs> Gavin McInnes is pretty funny. Richard Spencer had some great moments, you know, like the I win, they fucking lose. That's how the world works. That's fucking awesome. That's epic. That's a that's epic. We love that. We support that. We support narcissistic rants. That's cool. That's epic. That's based. And then Stefan Molyneux has that whole thing where he's like Taylor Swift, you're you're becoming rather old, and your eggs are drying up. If you don't have a baby within the next four years, your chances of miscarriage go up. But <laughs> and that's fucking awesome. That's fucking awesome. Have you seen the clip where Gavin throws up on I Hypocrite stream? No, I don't think you want to right now. I'm gonna be honest. A policy was it like it was just it was so disheartening to watch my people like this freaking guy especially as a christian like it was just it was so disgusting like I, I was i was disgusted by everybody and i was really upset about it and uh and even like my own family started to vote for him and i was just like damn dude it really like pulled me out of everything and kind of made me start reassessing um pretty much everything that's, that's what i mean by my early point is like the pendulum right like it, it, it like that's exactly what i was saying earlier it's like like the president was like you know some fucking like right leaning fucking douchebag right and that caused you to go in another direction right because you, you didn't like mm -hmm. certain things about him right and then you started questioning your whole worldview but yeah it's, yeah it's more about like questioning things yeah it gave me the ability to like reassess and start questioning more things so like shortly after that because i i was already doing my show at this point i was already um like gaining traction i was mostly streaming on i just started streaming and i was doing my podcast and um i was still far right but i didn't like trump right i wasn't a fan of trump but i would still defend a lot of the things that he would say just because that's those were already things that i believed in anyways like things about immigration building the wall like sure that, that shit's cool like um he would say things i liked but that doesn't mean i liked him he was a freaking retard so i um so i i i was doing a i, I was getting an audience i like i'm just getting back to having like 100 to 200 people in my chat after like another three years of streaming after this. But at that time, I'd only been streaming for maybe a year. I had about 150 people in live stream chats um, pretty consistently. I was getting uh, thousands of views on every stream. And then I started to make a video, a video essay about DYT calling out Ben Shapiro on systemic racism. And they explain all these like different reasons for why systemic racism is real and why Ben Shapiro is wrong about it. So I wanted to do like a video essay talking about how wrong they were and do this whole response video. And as I'm going through it, I'm explaining all these different things about like you know um how taxes or uh, welfare came in and like how it incentivizes black women to not have a man in the household and that not having two parent households makes it to where you're less likely to go to college and have a successful life and more likely to go to jail and more likely to do drugs and all this stuff you've heard it a million yeah, times that's a pretty um, leaning position that is not that is like those are those are right-wing talking points like that right there about the welfare and all of that um so no, no, that, that is i'm talking about uh, believing in uh, systemic racism that's, that's sure left, for sure like even moderates so, don't really believe in systemic racism it's more like a left well, so i'm going to do this video I go to get the definition of systemic racism. I'm like uh, 45 minutes into this video editing it. Spent days on it. Go to get the definition. And the definition is something that fits everything that I've been talking about. Like all of the welfare stuff, all of the stuff with uh, two-parent households, like all of this crap fits the definition. I'm like, shit, okay, okay this is weird. Because according to this definition, everything I'm calling, out, like everything I'm explaining to debunk systemic racism is also systemic racism. So okay, let me go get a different one. Because I always hear right-wingers say that like the definition changes depending on who you ask. And it's always different no matter where you go. So th this is just such an embarrassing story for him, isn't it? But I, did, I made a 45-minute documentary, and then uh, when I went to go and get the definition of the word that I was trying to debunk, I realized that actually the whole thing was wrong and that I should have just looked at the definition in the first place. It, wait, are you, are you good? Go through pages of Google searches of definitions for systemic racism. They're all the freaking same. And I'm like freaking out at this point. And I, I literally, like, I no joke, like having like this identity crisis in this moment. Like, oh my goodness, I believe in systemic racism, dude. Everything that I believe in, everything that I'm explaining, this is systemic racism. We just don't call it that, but it makes sense now. And I just like, I'm thinking through like everything I've ever heard and just like, oh my goodness, it all makes sense. Like, this, this all makes so much freaking sense. And I, I, I literally, I didn't stream, I didn't do a podcast, I didn't do anything for maybe like two to three weeks after this, because I was literally freaking out. Like, I'm thinking, like, these are the people that I hate. Like, people who believe in systemic racism are people- Wow, it's like, it's like poetry and rhymes. People that I freaking hate, but now I'm one of these people. What is happening? Like, what is going on? And I like, I, um, yeah, just like more and more things, maybe question more and more things. So I came out with a video where I just kind of explained, yeah, I believe in systemic racism now, I believe in all these different things. My audience totally canceled me. Like, hardcore, yes, they did not like me anymore. 
Um, there were tons of fights. It's like poetry. It this, rhymes. And, uh, I pretty much started back over with like zero viewers and yeah, that, got into the Twitch I mean space. The capture. They, they don't like that. They, they like yeah. when you're saying things that validate their identity and their beliefs. But you, that, you're like, it seems like you did basically 180. And they, 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 yeah, you like literally like lost. But I do commend you for like doing the right thing and like, you know, not BSing and being like, you know what, I'm the audience capture. I'm just gonna keep like walking around and like a right winger and said you like, you know, you were real, which I think is good. And very few people are. No, I made, the, I made the wrong decision. <laughs> Obviously, most people walk around, but that's interesting. Dude, I'm like the exact opposite. Like since middle school, I've been like left leaning, not too left, but like kind of center left. I, I my politics haven't like changed in like 25 years. I, I was really surprised when Trump won the election. I just did not think he was going to win, like pretty mm -hmm. much most people. Uh, never liked Trump. Uh, always. I remember telling my friend he has. I, I remember telling my best friend he has zero chance. I'm like he has zero chance, dude. No shot. Like, like he has zero chance of winning. Like over and over. Even when it was like, uh, like Justin and Hillary left. I'm like, yeah, zero chance still. Like he still has zero chance of winning. It's Hillary Clinton, bro. Come on, it's Hillary Clinton. Like he has zero <laughs> chance of winning. <laughs> you know what? Trump himself. He actually thought he was gonna lose because he was saying like before the election was even over. He's saying, oh, this is rigged. This is BS. He was he was saying it was rigged before the election even happened. And then as soon as he won, he just completely stopped saying that. He's like, yeah, it's a good election. You know, the, the people the people voted. Like he he himself thought he was gonna lose. Hillary thought she was gonna win. Uh, yeah, every, everyone thought that Trump was gonna lose. It was a surprise to everyone. Uh, I think honestly, any Democrat could have been Trump, except Hillary. She's just like super unlikable. Like just just she, she doesn't have that like you know, like you know like the presidential election is largely a popularity contest. Like why? Right? Like people support Trump not because of his policy. Like if you ask a Trump supporter, what are three policies that you like about Trump? Ninety five percent of them won't be able to name you three policies. No fucking way. I've done. I played this game a million times. It's like vibes. Yeah, I don't know. He seems like a badass. He pisses off the lib. He he's not PC. That's that's typically the answers you get. And like Hillary Clinton just doesn't pass the vibes test. Bill Clinton mm -hmm. had it. Uh, Barack Obama had it. George Bush, not so much. So it's kind of a miracle that he won. But um, yeah. Oh, uh, whoops. But Trump has the vibes. And I see Clinton's what's not. going on. I see what's I going think on. I think any other candidate, like if Joe Biden ran two, 2016, I think he probably would have. Oh, yeah. oh, sorry, 2012. Yeah, 2016. Mm -hmm. I think he would have won. Uh, and Joe Biden is not like some super charismatic dude either. He's like kind of like average vibes. But Hillary Clinton is just like super unlikable. Which to me doesn't yeah. matter at all. I, I only care about policies, policy accomplishments. It's the only thing I care about. I don't care how cool someone is, how charismatic they are, how badass they are. It's like, no, that matters to me. It's like, I look at policies. I'm like, when I look at Biden, even though like <laughs> he's like an old man who seems like he's barely there, when I look at the policy accomplishments of his administration, I'm like, yeah, they did some good things. The chip back, the um, IRA, you know, the bringing back the 100,000 manufacturing jobs. I'm like, yeah, you know, they definitely did some good policy accomplishments, right? So that's, that's the only thing I care about. But most people are not like that. Most people don't really give a shit about policy. It's all about vibes. Oh, Mike, you actually helped, you, you helped craft Tom's story here. You'll see it if you, if you stick around. Later on, Tom takes one of your chat messages and incorporates into his story. Yeah, I, I, I agree to some extent. I think that like the, the weird, so the weird thing about that is, is that because of freaking vibes, Donald Trump was able to just completely change the entire Republican Party and just like yeah. turn it into something totally different than what what I was part of. Like I, yeah. I was a neocon dude. I was like, I was all about like the George Bush era and Cheney. And... Wait, so like, what's this? Like now he's saying he's a neocon again. What's this? IRA, you know, the bringing back 800,000 manufacturing jobs. I'm like, yeah, you know, there's definitely there's some good policy accomplishments, right? So that's, that's the only thing I care about. But most people are not like that. Most people it was far really right a minute ago. Yeah, I, I, I agree to some extent. I think that, like, the, the weird, so the weird thing about that is, is that because of freaking vibes, Donald Trump was able to just completely change the entire Republican Party and just, like, yeah. turn it into something totally different than what what I was part of. Like, I, yeah. I was a neocon dude. I was, like, I was all about, like, the George Bush era and Cheney and all of that crap. And then he turned them all into a bunch of freaking... So just now, he was far right, and he was into Richard Spencer and Stephen Molyneux and Gavin McInnes, and now he's a neocon who was all about George Bush. <laughs> like it seemed like leftists like even stuff that i don't like about leftists stuff that i still disagree with leftists on they all believe in that shit now like they're just a bunch of populists now and they, and they like have so much that they agree with leftists on now that i i still like now i just have the same arguments with them that i've been having with leftists for a while yeah i got on twitch when i like i had a breakup with uh my girlfriend during the time where i was like questioning everything sent me into like a very like deep depression for about a year and i got into twitch streaming at that time and was just literally questioning like everything and um like all the people that i was talking to in the twitch space were um were like having like a large effect on the sort of opinions that i was picking up and the way that i like the positions that destiny I was destiny on, like, destiny destiny i was losing and realizing that i was losing them and kind of uh, changing positions over and over and doing a lot more research into crap and so yeah it was kind of a, a process of like moving on everything whereas now i probably what most people would consider like a centrist or like a, a liberal type just person. like i very much believe in like systemic issues things like systemic racism patriarchy uh toxic masculinity like all these things i believe in all this stuff i just don't like i think that lots of people take those ideas and misuse them to extreme degrees um 
and like play victim cards and you know just uh get into like identity politics and uh socialism and all this other insane bullcrap that is uh still stuff that i like i, I will never have anything to do with as I said, I know we should do a debate about, um, what's it called, uh, toxic masculinity at some point. I think we might have disagreements on that. But, uh, yeah, there's a really funny video on YouTube of basically a guy who goes to a Trump rally, and he's like, he, he's, he's obviously, he's like a liberal, right? But he puts on like a MAGA shit, and he basically starts talking to Trump supporters, and he starts saying left-wing policies that make him seem like Biden is against them and Trump is for them. He's like, yeah, you know, this is, this is, this is you know, Biden is like all about like privatizing healthcare. We got, you know, we got to fucking stick it to Biden. You know, we, we got to give healthcare to everybody. Like, yeah, 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 Trump's going to do it. Biden's not going to do it. He doesn't want it. You know, he wants to, he just wants to give it to the elite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're agreeing to like all these like hardcore left policies. Like, um, yeah, you know, like people aren't getting paid enough. Okay, this is all just about gay politics shit. Let's skip to the, the stories, okay? <clears throat> so, we're going to watch this. Obviously, there's no way to verify or disprove almost anything in these stories i'm sure there's elements of truth to everything tom says that's typically uh, an experienced liar an experienced liar knows that the best way to to deceive is to change interpretations and exaggerate it's not to change facts or to introduce brand new facts that simply weren't there before but to just you know amp things up change little bits shift things around a little bit make things seem a little bit different a little bit cooler a little bit more impressive so there's no way for us to truly know but i'm just gonna say there's a few i'm gonna point out a few tells where i think you can tell that there's some level of dishonesty going on here all right down and he's like oh i got him i got him and they're like no put him down now put him down now i they put me down i start to hear like banging wait so here somewhere around here you, you, he's like going off about like how I think I'm special and how I think I can do more than everybody else and that I, I think I can get away with everything, which to some degree, because my officer would come and goof off with me every morning, I, there probably was this like sentiment from people that I was able to get away with shit because you don't goof off with the freaking officers. You don't do this. Like nobody does this. And the fact that we were doing this every morning, like there probably was this like, you know, feeling that I was like, I thought I was special or something. Okay. So he's screaming and yelling at me that I'm able to goof off with his boss and everything. I have to sneeze. Worst freaking timing in the world. I have to sneeze. He's in my face. I don't know what to do. So I start to lift up my hand to cover my mouth so I don't sneeze. And literally the second I move my hand, he grabs me around my neck and picks me up off the ground by my neck, like in a chokehold. And my feet are like a foot off the ground. Like, and I'm like kicking and um, butt naked, remind you. So I don't even know if I ever sneezed. I have no idea. If I, this is a question everybody always asks me. Did you sneeze? I don't know. I don't remember. Um commotion starts breaking out everywhere like i hear everybody screaming and yelling and there's like you know pushing and all sorts of stuff they sh slam the door to the shakedown shack there's normally a guard standing right at the door who lets one person in at a time he slams the door and i'm like screaming and like get out like let me down like screaming you know trying to get him like kicking and um and he just holds me there and literally says i'm gonna kill you red dot like he says this to me i remember it specifically other people told me they heard it too so i didn't like just hear a thing other people told me they heard him say i'm gonna kill you red dot um and like everything starts going black he's got me up off the ground for a while um i hear other officers start yelling put him down put him down and he's like oh i got him i got him and they're like no put him down now put him down now i they put me down i start to hear like banging on the other doors the other inmates are literally trying to break down the door now like they hear me screaming they hear me yelling they put they put me on the floor on my feet and i'm like kind of like falling over and they're holding me up and then they go one they put cuffs on me so they cuff my hands behind my back and they go one two three and one guard kicks his my feet out from under me and i kind of go like airborne the other guard kicks me in the back at like the same time so i just kind of go up and then come smack down on concrete bust my head hit my knees first like shattered my kneecap sprained my other knee um i got like blood like coming out of my head and i'm like laying there with like blood like flowing into my mouth and um and then foley comes and grabs my cuffs and like pulls them up behind my back and is like pulling my shoulder out of socket and i'm screaming like like freaking crazy everything's i'm just now starting to gain vision again like everything had been black for a minute i was just kind of like all like you know dizzy and yeah. fainting yeah, I um so yeah he pulls my arms up i'm screaming again the doors are like literally i got to about to get like broken down i hear the other guys like the cops are yelling at the other inmates that were in there at the same time getting searched they start yelling at all of them to get on the ground okay guys there's something you've got to remember as well this isn't quite a jail either okay guys this isn't quite a this is a pdc this is a a what is it a probational detention center which is more like a, a, a halfway house rehab confinement uh, than a conventional prison.
So this can I see? Can can I can I imagine a situation where there's this quote unquote shakedown shack where there's no cameras because people are gonna be naked in there. They're getting shaken down. He's been kissing up to one of the officers. And maybe he, he gets the shit kicked out of him because he, you know, maybe may, I can maybe see him squaring up or something. You know, I don't know if the sneezing thing is totally true. Who knows? Who knows? But the point is, that there's probably some truth there. I'm sure there's some truth there. I'm sure he was had some bad experience in prison, got his ass beat. Yeah. Uh, that may well have happened. May well have happened. But this, I do not buy the excesses of this story. I do not buy this prison riot to try and save him. This, like, whole, like, oh, the extent of his injuries, like, there's blood pouring out of your head into your mouth, your kneecap shattered. You're being choked out. Like, come on. And there's, like, commotion all around me, and uh, sounds like people fighting and crap. Um, so they, they grab me by the cuffs and drag me over behind the counter. The counter is where you go. So, like, once you fi they finish strip searching you, you walk over to the counter, and they'll give you a new pair, uh, a new jumpsuit to wear. Um, and what was his crime? He'll talk about that later. Um, they drag me behind the counter, and then they put the pile of dirty clothes on top of me. And I'm, like, kind of, like, pass out, like, freaking blood, like, coming out of my head and everything. And, oh, my God. Um, just kind of out of it. The door gets busted open, and they're yelling, where's Pinion? Where's Pinion? And the, the guards are like, oh, he left. Like, he, he threw a fit. He's going to the hole. Uh, you're, you're never going to see him again. Yeah, he's in trouble. You know, st stuff like oh that. And I'm, like, laying under this, these clothes, like, breathing, like, super hard and, like, trying to, like, gain my faculties back. And um, they, they go back outside. They finish strip searching everybody. Um, but then they come in after everybody's gone. They come in. My lieutenant comes in and he's like you know red dot why what did you do you like you fucking idiot you know going off on me they stand me up i can't like stand up by myself and i'm like barely hobbling and um i just have so much like adrenaline that for some reason i was able to walk some for some reason <laughs> at the next day i couldn't walk at all like i literally could barely move my leg let alone walk on it um but at that time i was able to walk a good bit and hobble and my lieutenant says all right is everybody gone they're like yes we took everybody back to the prison. i just love um, it it's like you can done. see in real time he feels like he's saying something that's inconsistent with the previous part of the story so he's like oh yeah i just had like so much I, I, I so much adrenaline i just, you know i could just i, I could just do it somehow <laughs> oh man outside anymore we walk out the door both of them holding me under my shoulders like dragging me um and there's everybody all the inmates still standing there now this is a pdc run by like probation sentences yeah but the like skull blast and um, blood he's blacked so out now walking in in <laughs> so, yeah, prison, okay. you violate probation and they send you back to county to get resentenced for violating probation right and it happens all the time people get into a fight you go home you go back to um to county you catch a new charge and you violate probation like it's a super strict place they're dragging me out I see everybody, and I start screaming and yelling. Like, they just beat the shit out of me for no reason. I didn't do shit. He's a, mo he's a lying motherfucker. This bitch-ass motherfucker right here just, like, going off, like, screaming and yelling, pointing at Foley. Like, this motherfucker right here, he just beat the shit out of me for no reason. I didn't do anything. Like, going off. After I just, like, told these people I never cussed, like, I I'm going off, too. Like, <laughs> like well, just right. pretty, pretty good reason for you. Yeah, sure. And because I thought, like, a freaking prison riot was about to break out, like, 20, 30 minutes earlier. So I thought, now that I can tell them what happened, now it'll happen. Now the freaking prison riot will break out. Now we'll do everything. But the guards come all and, like, run in between them. They're all standing in line, you know, at attention with their arm, hands behind their back. And there just wasn't much they could do. So I'm just screaming and yelling. And um, they drag me back. They put me in the hole. Left me there for a couple months. The only time I saw anybody was when a, a nurse came in to say she was checking on me couple months in the hole she literally like went to check my reflexes and hits me on the freaking kneecap dude with like a a, a guard yeah, next yeah, to her yeah yeah I, I know what you're talking about yes i was screaming bloody murder dude and you can see my kneecap is like all mangled you can see it like it's obvious under my skin like my freaking bones are mangled right there and she's freaking tapping this thing with the little hammer thing and she's like i'm screaming she's like yeah no he's fine he's faking it there's nothing wrong with him and they left and left me there for months um so yeah Dude, that was one of the fucking craziest stories I've heard in a long time. I'm really, really sorry you had to go through that, man. That's uh, that's like fucking super tragic, man. I, you know, my heart goes out. I'm sorry I had to go through that, bro. I have so many questions. That sounds fucked uh, up, bro. I've got a lot of questions. Like. Okay, so I think it's like I have like five questions. So first of all, um, 
I, this is the part that confused me. So this fucking crazy dude, he's like choking, he lifts you up. It seems like the other guards came in and they kind of try to like, uh, you know, like de-escalate the situation. Like, no, put him down. Why after doing that did they then attack you? That's the part that I didn't understand. Like, what, what do you think made them attack you after basically, in a way, like, quote unquote, saving you? So there was one guard that was yelling for him to put me down. The guy who closed the door to stop the inmates from getting in. He's the guard who yelled at them to put me down. Um, and I guess I didn't mention, but when he was pulling the cuffs up behind me and like pulling my like arm, shoulders out of socket, the other guards were like kneeing me and like punching me in the ribs and like. Oh, I, I forgot to mention this bit too. Me and crap. Um, while I'm like laying there bleeding. Um, so the, all of them were happy to beat the shit out of me. The reason oh, okay. I mentioned like all of the stuff first is because this realization didn't come to me till way later. When one of my friends who was in prison with me lives right next to me, he got out. He was telling me, you know, the day that Foley beat the shit out of you, he's like, he was my detail officer, and he passed out drunk in the middle of the street like he's like we walked to a pool um to clean see pool. Th this is the bit see this that is a little bit of a strange wording there uh don't know if you guys spotted that i'll just pull it back it didn't come there. to me till way later when one of my friends who was in prison with me lived so now he's recounting when he spoke to his friend about this story okay so right next to me he got out he was telling me what what does his friend say so he I think this conversation happened because he, look here, he recalls a quote from, from his friend here, okay? You know the day that Foley beat the shit out of you? He's like, he was my detail officer. You know the day that Foley beat the shit out of you? Not, do you remember the day the prison riot happened? Not, do you remember the day all the guards beat the shit out of you? The day Foley beat the shit out of you. I think this is probably closer to the story. Did he probably have his shit fucked up by this Foley guy? That that's that sounds yeah. Some dick dick CO in some fucking PDC who's got it out for him. I, I can there's I can imagine. I can imagine. But I can suspend my disbelief for a fight with some CO. <clears throat> Absolutely. I'm sure that could have happened, hundred percent. But this quote that he's recounting plus the insane details that we've just heard before, it seems crazy to me that if, if your friend was referring to that event, if, if that was the event, it's a prison riot where a bunch of guards were beating the shit out of you and caved your fucking head in and then put you in the hole for two months. It sounds insane to me that the way that your friend would recount that to you is the day Foley beat the shit out of you. That does not line up to me. That does not line up. So we'll carry on here. Officer. And he passed out drunk in the middle of the street. Like, he's like, we walked to a pool um, to clean the pool. It was like a, a city pool. And as we all walked across the street and he got out last and starts walking across and literally trips over himself and falls over and just passed out in the middle of the street, just laying there drunk. And we all had to come and like wake him up and get him up on his feet. And um, we had like pour pool water on him to get him back up. He's like, so he was like freaking wasted that day. Um, and so my... I, I like when he told me that that's when I realized shit this is the same day I got in trouble for freaking the the, the comment about them pouring the clear liquid in the cup this is the same day this was freaking right. punishment for me mentioning the clear liquid in the cup that's what this was I wondered forever what the hell happened there I wondered forever like what the hell happened why did this happen what what made this happen and it wasn't until like yeah like a year later where uh one of my buddies mentioned his, his officer passing out where all of a sudden they put it all together I was like oh shit dude Totally forgot about all of that. Okay, okay, I see. Did that guy, so you mentioned it was actually, uh, it makes more sense now. So, so there was one guy that was saying, put him down, put him down. But the other guys were just basically like, kind of, like, whatever, just like chilling. Did that guy, while the, uh, when they started beating Paul saying, if I remember correctly, he has told this story differently in the past, where it was just one guard beating the shit out of him. We'll try, we can, thank you for letting me know. My, my diggers realized swiftly. See if we can find that story. That'd be interesting. Did he say or do anything, or he just like didn't do anything? What do you mean, Foley? No, no. So you mentioned so when Foley was choking you, there was you mentioned there was one guard by the door who was saying, "Put him down, put him down, put him down." Yeah. Right. And then he puts you down, and then all the guards start beating the shit out of you. Right. Did that guy yeah. who was did he did he try? No, to, like, he stop? couldn't really see. Like they're like kind of surrounded me, and like 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 the guy who keeps like kneeing me is down on his like he's crouched down next to me, um, kneeing me over Wait. and over, like pulling my arms down. They're telling me to stop resisting and shit. Uh, sorry. Am I retarded? How do you crouch and knee? How do you knee while crouching? Is that that seems really hard? Like really hard.
I'm just going to get up and try this quickly, okay? Just trying the logistics of this. I'm not having up, no. I, I quite... <laughs> I, I literally can't do it. No, there's no way. Please, I beg someone. If you can... Guys, record footage of a... <laughs> Jeez, voice crack. Freak! Uh, record footage of one of you kneeing something while crouched. Okay? You can help vindicate Tom right now. Record footage of you kneeing while crouched. <laughs> Maybe we can... Believe Tom. A real man could. Yeah, maybe it's uh, maybe it's no leg day. Maybe that's the problem. Well, no, any day. Like I ever, wasn't, I wasn't doing anything. I was, I was out of it. I completely was. Watching brutality and like so uncalled for. Uh, did um anything ever happen to any of these guys? Always specifically. No. So, the the one time anything happened at all, I put in. I somebody told me after I got out of the hole that if I told the prison that I was suing them they would have to send me somewhere. And there were times where they would say, like, you don't, like I told them one time, I'm like, I'm never going back to the shakedown shack. You guys will never get me back on. I was like, if you want to go on detail, I'll go on detail, but I will never go through that shakedown shack ever again. It's not happening. And they're like, you know, you're going to get sent back to county and catch a charge. And I was like, that's fine. I would be, I would love for a judge to hear about this. I would love for a judge to hear about this. And so that afterwards, somebody told me, they're like, if you just tell them you're suing them, they have to move you out of this prison. So I wrote a letter and like put it in the box that says like, I, I, do, I do not see, no, I don't see, how do you knee while crouched? How do you do that? How do you knee while crouched? Your knees are bent. When they half lay down and bring the knees up. But as I don't, didn't... You can't knee while crouched. I just do, I do not believe this. How do you knee while crouched? I just tried it and I can't see a mechanical way of kneeing while crouched. It, you... You're more on all fours, not crouched. I've seen it in the UFC. I have a hand down on the ground. Oh, now that would make sense. Well, yeah, okay. Okay, yeah, all right. I'm with you guys now. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's not really... Uh, okay, right, crouching is just... Crouching is leading me astray there because I'm thinking like squatting. I'm thinking like squatting. Yeah, hand down on the ground isn't isn't crouching. You guys, um, for what happened here, I would like to be moved somewhere else or go back to county. Um, and so they called me into the warden's office and they sent me down. And at the time, like my parents had like disowned me. Um, my girlfriend just out of nowhere stopped writing me letters, uh, stopped answering my calls. Like I put money on my books so that I could call her and talk to her. She just stopped answering and. Um, the people who were coming to visitation all just stopped coming. And so I, I had no clue what was going on. I had no contact to the outside anymore. And so they call me into the office. They're like, hey, we heard you had a scuffle with the officers that you attacked them. They had to defend themselves. And huh. um, and I like I tell them like, that's a lie. Like that never happened. There's, there's no, cameras like, there, I assume, right? no. Yeah, because there's okay. naked uh, people in there. So you can't have cameras anywhere where there's naked people. Okay. Um, so I'm telling them, I'm like, yeah, th like that's a lie. Never happened. They're like, that's sir. It's a lie, sir. And I was like, I'm not saying that shit to you guys. I'm not saying it. Like, you guys can send me back to county, but I'm not saying this stuff to you guys. I don't care. And it is like when I'm still, like, just fresh out of the hole. Just got out of the hole. Um, they, so they start, like, telling me, like, well, just so you know, we called your girlfriend and talked to her. Um, she's really disappointed in you. She wants you to get out, and she's waiting for you to get out, and now we're going to have to extend your time. Um, we talked to your parents. Your fucking girlfriend? Holy shit. Is a, we talked to your parents when they said that they're not surprised you did this and um but he's like your we, your parents did tell me that when you get out they will let you come home as long as you are uh on good behavior for the rest of the time and i like start bawling crying i'm like 
like all like upset now i'm like shit dude I, like, I don't know where all these freaking people went and now all of a sudden they're like the first little bit of information i get is from these guys right now and so they're like yeah like you if you just cooperate and just do what we tell you you'll be able to have a life when you get out you don't want to be one of those guys who goes to prison it's like homeless the rest of his life and you know is back on drugs and all this other crap they're like you know there's people out there who care about you and we talk to them and they really care about you and they really want you to do better and so we're here to help you with that we want you to do better too we want you to you know succeed and so we just want we just need you to cooperate and i'm like yeah i'm, I'm freaking bawling crying sitting there like shit dude i i don't know what to do now i had a whole plan on like bucking this whole thing and and getting like resentenced and kicked out today and now <laughs> now because i had nothing to like get out for i had nothing to look forward to i didn't care if i got extended i didn't like i didn't give a shit i had nothing to get out for like there was nothing left for me outside so i didn't i didn't care and then they they did this whole freaking thing which as far as i know they never called my girlfriend they never talked to my parents none of this shit ever happened oh they okay okay uh, that's, that's why i was saying holy shit i thought they actually did call your girlfriend so they they didn't so they were lying basically they never called mm -hmm. your girlfriend yep okay so okay so here's another follow-up question so now that you're out have you not been tempted to sue them like i feel like i would be like so yeah. raging that i would like try to like sue the shit out of them yeah initially that was like i was super angry when i first got out there's some like super cringe like facebook posts from me like <laughs> just like vague posting hardcore nobody knows what the hell i'm talking about people are like listen guys i'm not saying this like, whole story is a lie i don't think this whole story is a lie i think he probably i would not be surprised if he had an altercation with a prison guard that ended poorly and they probably tried to, you know, use... They probably pressured them to basically shut the fuck up about it. I... That... I can buy into that. I can buy into that. I don't know how to explain this shit to them. But, but the like, rest of it... Know, it's, like, therapeutic for me to, like, put words on a, on a thing and hit post anyways at, yeah, at the time. So I, I don't know. Um, so, yeah, like, I was super mad. Super pissed off. When I got out, like, everywhere I went was in a wheelchair and... Um, or on crutches. And uh, the, the... I talked to lawyers for a while. And almost every one of them was like, yeah, this is just like an unwinnable case. Like, you don't know the names of the other people who were in there. Um, you don't have, uh, you don't have their phone numbers. Like, it, we would have to, um, uh, like, request all this information. And there's no cameras, so it'd be really hard to figure it out. And, um, and one, one lawyer. Wait, 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 wait. Um, so was yeah, like, I was super mad, super pissed off. When I got out, like, everywhere I went was in a wheelchair and, um, or on crutches. And, uh, the... The, I talked to wheelchair lawyers, crutches and almost every one of them was like Same yeah thing. this is just like an unwinnable case like you don't know the names of the other people who were in there um but I, have, how was it so wait was he walking around in prison and then he's in a wheelchair when he gets out okay uh you don't have their phone or in numbers, the pdc like, it, we would have to um um uh, like request all this information and there's no cameras so it'd be really hard to figure it out and um and one one lawyer told me i think it was like the third or fourth lawyer i talked to he said um are you black and i was like no why he's like if you were black we could make like a whole shit storm in the media over this and really put pressure on them to deal with this but he's like no i just don't see this uh becoming anything he's like you just kind of have like a, a crappy situation where nothing can really come of it and yeah um, i guess i guess that does make sense because number one no cameras and number two there was uh, as far as i understand no prisoners there was just guards and so yeah 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 wait so i just missed the black line didn't i yeah right so you see this right okay out and um and one one lawyer told me i think it was like the third or fourth lawyer i talked to he said um are you black and i was like no why he's like if you were black, that's we so super like chatted two dollars it is true tom got really beat up and cried this, but the rest he's like no. no i just don't see this uh becoming anything he's like you just kind of have like a, a crappy situation where nothing can really come of it and yeah, um, I guess I guess that does make sense because number one, no cameras. Right. Two, there was, uh, as far as I understand, no prisoners. There was just guards, and they'll all just stick to the evidence, say self defense. They'll just lie and say, oh, self defense, and then it's your word against like, you, and you're an ex criminal, you know, uh, mm -hmm. when judge versus seven whatever guards. It's like, how do you how do you prove that? Like, you know, there's no witnesses, no cameras. It's like, how do you prove? And that? you've got to bear in mind, right, guys? I believe this is pre 2010. I think it's about 2009. This story. So this is like pre, like hysteria about police violence against black people this is not like a big thing in the media at the time is it, it does it come up sure but it's not like <clears throat> it's not like the tone of the the 2010s tom's like 35 It wasn't self-defense they, they actually attacked you like yeah so okay so i can now that i've thought about it, i can kind of see how it would be like a really 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 tough case it's like how do you prove that like and on top of that i was a heroin addict going in and 
when I got out, it was like really important that I stayed clean for like the first time in a long time and that I wasn't like screwing up. And um, after, I don't know, I probably talked to like 10 lawyers in the end and some of them, I remember talking to one of them saying like, hey, this other lawyer said like, if I was black, that this would like be better. They're like, yeah, maybe like, it's, I don't know. It doesn't matter because you're not going to get anything out of it anyways. And um, just hearing that so many times over and over from different lawyers, I eventually thought like, okay, I could keep looking. I could keep fi trying to find somebody who has some sort of like social justice motive to to push this through but i don't have money to pay any lawyers so like they're gonna have right. to do it um uh, you know just hoping that there's some sort of settlement in the end um i just i i <laughs> i'm trying not to like, poison the well too much i'm trying to just present the information because obviously i don't buy so much of this but i don't want to sit here and go like come on dude 10 lawyers <laughs> like it's I, <laughs> it's so difficult because it's like every every opportunity is like yeah, there's like 50 guards beating me up and then 100 rioters came in and started breaking me out and there was a massive war. And then I, I spoke to like every lawyer in, in the country. I was going up and down. I was trying to start a human rights complaint. I was about to secure white rights. <laughs> I went in America. <laughs> like, <laughs> I just don't. Do you hate content? It's not about hating content. It's just it gives. Uh, there's some Tom freaks in chat. I know it's Tom freaks in chat, but I don't think they actually watch a lot of his content. I think they just passively consume whatever video he's playing, and I don't want to put them off. I want them to see how ridiculous this guy's stories are, because <clears throat> obviously there's an element of truth to this, right? He's gonna. He probably did get assaulted in prison, like. That must be true but just watching this you just you're immediately like fuck me there is literally no way that all of this is true if 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 all of this is true you you should be there should be documentaries about you bro you should have been the big human rights abuse case of the uh, 2000s but ignored for being white why did no right-wing organization go with that ignored for being white you couldn't you wouldn't have a case because you were white really you couldn't get fox news to run with that so Thomas confirmed actually in prison. He was in a PDC. He was in a probational detention facility, a detention center. And I was like, just part, just like, I just really felt like I wanted to just like push it behind me. Like at that point, like that's really all I want is just like, you know, I think like I'm just, I'm done with the, everything. Like I'm just done talking about this. I'm done. According to I'm records, done. boots. I'm done. Uh, I'm done like with all of this. I'm just just putting it behind me and moving on. And that's yeah, that's what I did. Okay, that, that, that makes sense. So two more questions. So first of all, what kind of a prison was this exactly? Because I've never heard this. What you're describing sounds like military school, much more so than a prison. Well, well. Prison. Okay, there's no records of the PDC specifically, but there are. There's other evidence that points towards it. We we know that the, the probation happened, and you know if he breached. But the thing is, that the probation gets wiped after it completes, I believe. So if he, I think if he broke parole. Or probation or whatever in that period we we wouldn't have the record of that where you have to say like yes sir no sir like I'm, like what kind of prison is this exactly so there is a um there's a different so there's a state facility called a pdc it stands for probationary detention center it's a specific prison for people on probation so where you can get like a different type of sentence because you're on probation that will send you to this place instead well, of if you're on probation you just get to like you're out but you just like can't get into trouble and you have some restrictions i thought you were like home i, I didn't know you could be on probation like wh what differentiates someone this is like the fourth time i got arrested bro uh so it was like kind of like an in-between between like regular probation and jail essentially yeah so i got arrested i was in jail for six months just in county i got 10 years probation got out two weeks later got arrested this time and so i got arrested with 10 years of probation on right so the um so because i was on 10 years probation not only do i have to deal with this yeah charge, crack, crack, to trust me we've already we've been through all that. and so that. part of the entire deal with this one is that we were settling everything in one case i didn't have to go back for another um another hearing for the violation they were just going to send me to pdc this is after i got i had a uh I had a sentence for a year, but there was overcrowding and they were starting to like resentence people. And if you were on probation, you could take a deal. Yeah, he, he got he got 10 years probation. It was uh, so he. No, no, I'm pretty sure we do have records of the 10 years probation. It was he got. What was it about 12 charges before he got the probation? So he basically he got arrested for like, you know, weed possession, burglary, 
And I think eventually the one he ultimately got the book thrown at him for was the credit card fraud. Though, um, from the records I've seen, I've only seen evidence of Tom using his mother's credit card at a gas station. I've never seen evidence of the Rico uh, fraud ring that Tom has been talking about. So, I'm not sure what the truth is there. To do your time in PDC. And so that's what I did. Um, PDC is not worse than a regular prison, no? There's, there's pluses and minuses. There was, there was all sorts of stuff. And I had other friends who were already going to the PDC, so it was just beneficial for me to, like at the time, I, I, I would just rather go to the PDC. Um, so yeah, so I, I and I, I was sentenced to another 10 years of probation with this one. So I ended up with two 10 year probation sentences, one concurrent, um, and uh, having to finish out the sentence with PDC. And so, okay. uh, so yeah, so it's a PDC that is like a probationary detention center. So when I'm talking about like, if you get in trouble there, you get sent back to county because and you have to, it's considered a probation violation. Like this is, that doesn't happen in normal prison. That doesn't happen everywhere else. That only happens in PDC because it's like a probationary detention center. Okay, okay, that, that, I understand now. And then last question, what in the world were you getting arrested for? Honestly, dude, when I first met you and like up until literally an hour ago, my impression of you and don't take offense was like- up Yeah, what, time, what's your criminal experience, like, Tom? Like good upbringing, uh, play, you know, maybe played a little sports, went to college, like super like, like kind of like law abiding, like very like kind of like straight and narrow, like probably, probably doesn't even drink much. And like, uh, my impression was way off apparently. So I'm also curious, like what were you being arrested for? I mean, for the most part, everything you, you got is correct. Like I went to, um, I was like a heroin addict. Um, I like dropped out of school. I was like a high level, uh, high school athlete and, um, had like scouts looking at me for football, even when I was in, uh, like a sophomore and I, had like a bunch of health problems and had continuously had health problems and had surgeries, got hooked on my pain medication, ended up escalating those over time uh, until I was like literally injecting needles and doing heroin. Um, me and my friends. My yeah, high level athlete. So Tom, what are the sports that Tom's claimed he plays? What was it? MMA, NBA, football. He said he trained, he trained NBA, didn't he? Or was it MMA? Which one? He trained, he trained future, yeah, 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 MMA trained NBA coach. That was it. That was it. <laughs> My group of friends, we had like all of these like different things that we were doing to help us make money to support our drug habits. And so we were selling different drugs. We were robbing people. We were, um, oh. we were stealing debit cards, uh, robbing houses. Uh, oh, we, okay. we had like different types of um, uh, schemes that we would do against other drug dealers to rob them, like oh, in detail, okay. like very detailed schemes. And I love this. I love this. This is my favorite bit. Oh man, this is my favorite bit. This is my favorite. Like debit cards, uh, robbing house. Right, right, right. Okay, so we had like all of these like different things. We had like all these different things that we were doing to help us make all these money different things we were doing to help us make help us make money. So we were selling different. So what sort of things were you doing to help you make money, drugs. Tom? We were robbing people. We were we were selling drugs, robbing people. Um, we were stealing debit cards. I was stealing my mom's credit card. Uh, robbing houses. Uh, I was robbing people. Uh, we, we had Again. like different types of um, different types of um, uh, schemes that we schemes do against other drug dealers to rob them against other drug dealers. So it's actually it's actually a virtuous thing because he's doing it against drug dealers like in detail, like very detailed like in detail, very detailed schemes. schemes. The most detailed schemes, in fact, I have the schemes that I have are so detailed these detailed schemes that i'm using these detailed schemes i'm using to fuck over the other drug dealers i'm like i'm sort of like heisenberg when you think about it sort of like a bit of a a, a light from death note a destiny from the from the youtube stream destiny i've got a lot of schemes i'm always scheming <laughs> very detailed schemes it's fucking ill. You're not a mastermind, bro. You're not Heisenberg. You're not him. You're not him. You ain't him, bro. You ain't that wigger. I'm sorry to tell you, Tom. You wouldn't believe how detailed my schemes are. Everybody's talking about it. Everybody's saying, Tom, you have the most detailed schemes. <laughs> these <laughs> these in-detail schemes. It's fucking hilarious, man. It's pathetic. You're like, you are, you are the most 95 IQ wigger I've ever seen. And you're sitting there talking about detailed schemes.
I had like a bunch of health problems and had continuously had health problems and had surgeries, got hooked on my pain medication, ended up escalating those over time uh, until I was like literally injecting needles and doing heroin. Um, me and my friends, my group of friends, we had like all of these like different things that we were doing to help us make money to support our drug habits. I love it. And so we were selling different drugs. We were robbing petty people. Crime. We were petty crime. Um, we were stealing debit cards. Petty crime. Uh, robbing houses. Petty crime. Uh, we we had like different types of um, uh, schemes that we would do against other drug dealers to rob them, like oh, in detail. Like oh, oh detail also scheme. by the way, I'm a criminal mastermind, just like the main character from the, the hit TV show Breaking Bad. I just love it. It's like he's like, oh, this is this is sounding really dumb. This is making me sound like a pathetic loser criminal. Quick, I've got to throw something. I've got to throw something in there to make it sound a bit better. So we're doing all these schemes, these very detailed schemes, the most detailed schemes you've ever seen. Schemes and stuff that we were doing. Um, and then you got and, one day. Yeah, so I got I got arrested for residential burglaries for those six months. But then when I got arrested again, the two weeks later. It, there was like a number of charges and uh, there was a RICO investigation at the time. And I thought I was going away for a very long time. Like I, when I got arrested, uh, uh, I thought I was going to be gone for like 10 years. I, I thought it, I it literally, I had already told all my friends cause we, we had heard that there was a RICO investigation. And so, so uh, there's a RICO invested. Oh my God. No, no record of any RICO charges, by the way. There's actually no record of Tom Fullery ever receiving a RICO charge. I told all of them, like, I get arrested again. You guys have to like disappear, like literally just go. And within a day I got arrested. They were all gone, like out of the state, disappeared. Nobody could find them. Um, and so, so I said, guys, you got to get out of here. Guys, I'll tell you, I'll go down. Guys, you run, become smoke. Vanish. <laughs> Go quietly into the light. <laughs> Tom's a horn dog chasing women. Thank you for the dono. I don't know who that came from. I can't even. Oh okay, yeah, thank you, Doobie. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's just amazing. It's amazing. He literally sees himself as like, this is fucking. What's his name? Fuck, I can't think of it. The guy from Red Dead. Arthur, uh... Fuck me. What's his name? Arthur Morgan. He thinks he's fucking Arthur Morgan. He's like, take my Woodstock hat. <laughs> take my Woodstock hat. <laughs> Take your son and go like Woodstock at. <laughs> Where's the scene? Alright, <laughs> 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 oh. Arthur, come on, let's go. You go. Keep pushing, Arthur. No. <coughs> no. I think I've pushed all I can. Come on, you go. We ain't got time for this, not now. We ain't both gonna make it. Go. Smith, now. it's Smith. <laughs> I'll hold him up. <laughs> it would mean a lot to me. Please. There ain't no more time for talk. Go. Arthur, go to your family. Arthur, get the hell out of here and be a goddamn man. You're my brother. I know. I know. God <laughs> oh, man. Fuck me. <laughs> Be a good man, Tom. <laughs> oh, man. 
This is how he sees himself. This is how he's recounting that story. <laughs> the Pinkertons are coming. <laughs> yeah, someone has to edit in the Woodstock app. Someone please edit in the Woodstock app. <laughs> Holy fuck. <laughs> oh, man. So, yeah, I, I thought, like, yeah, I'm just going to take everything on the chin again. And, um... My girlfriend's dad was working with the investigators and helping them. You're uh, laughing. <laughs> His crew barely made up over the borderline and you're laughing? <laughs> a Rico case on me and my friends. And, um, and so, yeah, there was like a, there was a whole thing. Cause even a Rico investigation is a, is racketeering. It's like organized crime. The, the, none of the, um, People like none of the detectives who had investigated me in the past were allowed to do the Rico case for some reason. And so there was like a specific like thing where the sheriff of the county ran the state drug enforcement uh, group. And he was like the only person who was allowed to investigate the Rico case with some other task force. And, um, and my girlfriend's dad knew him and was like friends with him. And that's like how all of this ended up blowing up. Um, but in the end, I ended up just getting like 17 charges of a number of other things instead. So I, I can't find that the, the total, I think the total number of charges that we've counted across everything is about 12. We've counted about 12 total charges. And that's not all at once. That, that was split up across uh, about three years. So you don't get... So he never. there was never a point where he got hit with 17 charges at once. Now, I don't believe he has hit, been hit with 17 at all. Uh, even in total. Okay. I'm assuming because okay. they yeah. never found Wait, the link to the clip. Else. That one. That makes sense. Also, on a different note, I'm curious. How did you go from... Uh, you mentioned... I mean, it's a story as old as time. It's like, right? Health issues, do an operation. You get painkillers. And then you started going up. I, I had actually uh, also a shoulder surgery, lots of pain. Start taking, you know, they prescribed me hydrocodone, uh, three months of it. Then, you know, the medication runs out. But, like, for me, I knew that I could not go up. I, I knew that, like, you know, that road is, is very dangerous. So I just went through, like, several months of, like, massive depression. And eventually my, my neurotransmitters, uh, you know, leveled out. How did you, I guess, go from the the painkillers, which were probably prescribed to you by your doctor, to like illegal, like injectable drugs. Um, it was like a, it was a slow process. Like initially, I, I got, I had uh, when I was in eighth grade, I was leaving school almost every single day. Like I was always sick. I, my vision would go blurry. I would get dizzy. I would get really bad chest pains, heart palpitations. Like it was really strange. And so my parents were picking me up from school almost every single day. And eventually, the they had a meeting with my parents where they're like, he's missing too much school. Like, he, we're going to have to, like, homebound him or something. Do you know what homebound is? No, I'm not familiar with that. So if you get homebound, it means that they will literally send all your schoolwork to your house or your parents go pick it up from the school. And they'll just, uh, like, expect you to just do the schoolwork and send it back because you're, you have some sort of, like, medical con condition where you can't show up to school. So they put me on homebound, but I was sleeping 20 hours a day, literally 20 hours a day. I remember my dad would actually, like, stay up all day waiting for me to wake up. I would wake up at like four o'clock in the morning and he would be like waiting there for me to finally wake up and we would go and he would, we would like play basketball somewhere or tennis or um, we would go do something like active for the short amount of time that I was awake and then I would go right back to bed and uh, um, that uh, lasted for about a year until they found cysts in my nasal cavities. It was two cysts the size of golf balls that were like pumping this is uh, oh cyst okay this explains his voice now this explains his voice so okay so many cat scans so many doctors visits so many specialists oh. like tried everything they didn't know what was wrong for, with me finally found these cysts um got surgery took them both out apparently while they were doing the operation they found like my tonsils and my adenoids were like severely poisoned as well so they had to take those out 
And so I ended up having four procedures in one day. And uh, when they got me out, they gave me liquid Demerol and liquid morphine. And Whoa. at the time, I was so like out of it from the surgeries and in so much pain, I didn't want to take it. I didn't want to, I didn't want to do it. Like it just made me feel like just weird. It made me feel really weird and out of it and loopy and dizzy. And like, I just, I didn't like it. I already felt bad. I didn't want to freaking feel weird. So I didn't take it until I started feeling better. And then I remember I started saying, like, okay, well, I'm still in a little bit of pain. So now I'll try doing it. So I would, and I really liked it then. And yeah. so then even after I yeah. got better, I continued taking these things and drinking them. It was all liquid. And, um, and then I started complaining, oh, I'm still in pain. I need more. And they would give me more. And then they were like, oh, if you're still in pain after this, like you have to come back in. There is something seriously wrong. I think you got the flavor just opened up. There's a real problem. You're probably going to have to get new surgery. Like I was like, oh, no, 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 I'm fine. Sorry. Never mind. I'm not in pain. Like <laughs> I started like finding away. new places. <laughs> yeah. I started getting like oxycodone initially uh percocets mm. after a while then eventually like roxacets then oxycontin um uh, till eventually i was taking like five eighties of oxycontin a day and i had friends Max, i think this is a a lie that's developed over a number of years i think it's probably the case here who were just like dude you're literally doing heroin it's already heroin I'm like what no that's not heroin he's like no it is heroin like your painkillers are the same exact thing as heroin you're just taking way more tylenol to where you have a much higher because there's been like, even sourcing support is saying that he remembers this story but it was only one guard that beat the shit out of him it wasn't a big prison riot so i think there's there's been little changes and developments that, that there's some element of truth. There's some core story there that's true, and then the, the details have have shifted and morphed over time. Of overdosing, but if you just do heroin, it's much better off. So I started doing heroin, starting injecting it, and um, I mean they were right. Like I saved so much money. I was spending like twenty five percent the amount. Max of money the confessed zero. Our super chatted four dollars and ninety nine cents. Do you think he made this on the spot or rehearsed this ten times in the mirror? Did you? Okay. So here's my question to you. Like when I was, um, I totally like understand the whole like this feel really good, dude. I, those three months when I was uh, after my surgery when I had Vicodin it was probably the happiest I've ever been. Honestly, like. Uh, yeah. it's kind of sad to say, but it, I was, it just felt so great. I don't know. I felt like my brain chemistry responded so positively. I was so happy just doing nothing because I was in pain, but, uh, I couldn't really do much because of my shoulder, but I'd sit there and like fucking watch TV and laugh my ass off. My girlfriend would come visit me and I was like so happy. I was like the happiest person ever. So I could totally, totally empathize with that good feeling. But I always knew like in the back of my mind that this, I cannot go up. I, this has to end. This has to be three months in it. And like, I cannot do it because I, I know what that road ends. Did you not have that voice in the back of your head? Um, yeah, of course. But it was just, there was always another extension, another extension, another extension. There was always new excuses. And this is a thing that everybody who does drugs always does. If you're an addict, there will be periods where you're like, okay, I'm going to do this today. I'm never doing this again. I'm sick of this life. I'm sick of like, you know, having to hide everything. I'm sick of lying to people. I'm sick of the crimes. I'm sick of worrying about cops. Like, I'm just sick of it. I'm doing it today. I'm done. And then like just some thought will pop in your head and you'll be like oh never mind i'm not done let me go get some more like and it's just that's it's that's like a never-ending cycle that is always happening where you're always just like convincing yourself to do it again and again and again and again so yeah okay i understand damn dude that's so how did you ultimately get clean <laughs> um well so being in prison for a year is uh was a huge help um and once I got out, like every other time that I got arrested, people would always say, like, are you going to go back to doing drugs when you get out? And I'd always be like, I don't know. Or sorry, I would always say, no, I'm definitely not doing drugs anymore. I'm done. I'll never do it again. And then literally, like within an hour of getting out, I was right back doing drugs every time. So this time, every time people ask me, they're like, are you going to go back to doing drugs again? And I'm like, uh, every other time you guys ask me this and I say no, but I do it anyways. So honestly, I don't know. I have no freaking idea. Like, maybe... Hopefully not. I'm going to try not to. And I don't know. Like, I just came out with a totally different mindset. Um, 
the girlfriend who just kind of skipped out on me while I was locked up. She was hardcore into heroin when I got out. And every time she would come see me, I would see like her pupils were just Hey, gone. Addy. All right, Addy. I would be like, I'm not. All right, Addy. You, like, I'm not talking to you. I'm not chilling with you until you get clean. Like, I don't want to have anything to do with you. Um, and the same with my friends. If they were. If they weren't clean, I didn't want to hang out with them. And so I just like kind of separated myself from everybody and just kind of started a a new path. Well, that's good, man. Natural props to you for getting clean. Uh, not a lot of people can do it. Uh, but yeah, it, it, is a, it is a tragic, like the, the whole, you know, you were in real pain, right? It's not like you made it up. You were in real pain. Your doctor gave you medication. You know, you kind of naturally trust the doctor, right? At least I think when you're younger and, uh, you know, and that's like, that's, that's like blows my mind how easily in America, like hardcore opiates are prescribed. It's not like that in a lot of other countries, like in like Belarus where I'm from or in Europe, that's, that's, it doesn't, sure they're prescribed sometimes, but it's like in much more moderation and also like the, you know, liquid morphine, that's a really strong one. Like, you know, I wasn't taking that. I had uh, Vicodin. Uh, which is, you know, still strong, but not that strong. But yeah, I mean, that's, it's fucking, I, I've, had, I've had quite a few friends who have like the same story basically as you, minus the jail, where they, uh, but a lot of them are actually dead now. They overdose, um, where, uh, you know, they just, they just had some kind of pain. Like totally like one guy, one of my friends, Joey, he was like a football player, like very anti-drug, didn't smoke weed or anything like that. Like, very, like, like I'm going to play football, I'm going to go to college, you know, like, type of dude. Uh, and then he had some kind of issue. I, I don't remember exactly what it is. Went to the doctor, gave him uh, some painkillers, escalated, and then he ultimately overdosed on heroin. Super sad story. And I've, I've heard that story over and over again. It's, like, crazy. I think it's getting a little better. I think that's, like, not as common anymore from what I've heard. But, yeah, it's, like, super just blows my mind how that's like how doctors will just so readily prescribe like hardcore opiates knowing that yeah when i got out i was telling and i went to the doctor and was telling him like yeah like this happened with my um okay readily prescribe like hardcore opiates knowing that yeah when i got out i was telling i i had i like a really bad knee pain and i went to the when I got out, I had, is this out of prison? I had really bad knee pain. You didn't just have bad knee pain a minute ago. You were in a wheelchair. Yeah, you were in real pain. Your doctor gave you medication. You know, you kind of naturally trust the doctor, right? At least I think when you're younger and, uh, you know. And you were in a wheelchair a minute ago, Tom. In America, like hardcore opiates. What do you mean class. knee pain? Like in a lot of other countries, like in like Belarus, where I'm from, or in Europe, that's, that's, it doesn't. Sure, they're prescribed sometimes, but it's like in much more moderation. And also, like the you know liquid morphine, that's a really strong one. Like you know, I wasn't taking that. I had uh, Vicodin, uh, which is you know still strong, but not that strong. But yeah, I mean that's it's fucking. I, I've, I've had quite a few friends who have like the same story basically as you, minus the jail, where they. Uh, but a lot of them are actually dead now. They overdose. Um, where uh, you know they just they just had some kind of pain. Like totally, like one guy, one of my friends, Joey, he was like a. Uh, Football player, like very anti-drug, didn't smoke weed or anything like that. Like very, like, like I'm gonna play football. I'm gonna go to college. You know, like type of dude. Uh, and then he had some kind of issue. I, I don't remember exactly what it is. Went to the doctor, gave him uh, some painkillers, escalated, and then he ultimately overdosed on heroin. Super sad story. And I've, I've heard that story over and over again. It's like crazy. I think it's getting a little better. I think that's like not as common anymore from what I've heard. But yeah, it's like super. Just blows my mind how that's like how doctors will just so readily prescribe like hardcore opiates, knowing that. Yeah, when I got out. I was telling, I, I had I had like a really bad knee pain and I went to the doctor. And... I had a re yeah, so you're saying you had a really bad knee pain. Like, dude. Your knee was mangled a minute ago. That's not how you would describe it, is it? When I got out, I had really bad knee pain. You had a shattered kneecap a minute ago, Tom. You were in a wheelchair. Was telling him, like, yeah, like, this happened with my, uh, when I was in prison, and, like, I still have bad knee pain. And um, the doctor was like, okay, I'm going to uh, 
prescribe you uh roxacets and i was like no dude i'm not i'm not i'm a heroin addict like i'm not gonna take that shit he was like oh no like if you're taking it for actual pain it's a totally different thing it's a <laughs> totally different process i was like bro i'm not taking that shit like <laughs> oh, i want yeah. something like suboxone or methadone or something like that he's like yeah, i don't i don't prescribe those things so i was like all right so i went huh. somewhere else and got prescribed suboxone and i've been oh food shops is here let's go taking suboxone ever since <laughs> who's up food shops Okay, that, that, that's fascinating. I just like it's different when it's real pain, as if it is, as if it is actually different. Dom, Dom, exactly Dom. Like yeah, I've had uh, several Dom. like uh, like many operations, and uh, they always like nowadays. I don't know why, but like for the um anesthesia, whatever that thing, and uh, you know the thing that kind of puts you out is they yeah. always fucking try to give me fentanyl, and I have to like argue with them. I'm like, I don't want fentanyl. Give me like a something that just puts me to sleep. They're like, no, no, fentanyl is like the best. It's it's really safe. I'm like, dude, I don't want fucking IV fentanyl. And they're like always fighting on that. Like ultimately they give in, and they're like, okay, fine, we'll just give you you know something else. But like I don't know why, but they're like. This, is, this has been at least like three, two or three times now where they're like, yeah, yeah, you know, we'll give you some uh, IV fentanyl. I'm like, dude, that's like one of the most addictive drugs. Why would I want that in my system? No, 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 it's, it's actually, you know, it's different when you're getting an operation. I'm like, dude, like, no, I don't want it. Uh, yeah, it kind of blows my mind and shit like that. Um, have you ever heard of Kratom? Yeah, Kratom, yeah. Do you, do you, have you ever taken it? No. Okay. Um. Kratom was, so when um. I, remember how I told you that I had the, um, what's called the, the whatever, the three months when I was in uh, like it. So basically after those three months ended, um. Kind of the middle ground I reached in my mind was that I'll take tremadol. Are you familiar with tremadol? Yeah, I know what tremadol is. Oh yeah, man. Painkiller, but still like an opiate. So I'll take tremadol. Uh, I, I would have a little. I would only take two pills a day. That was it. Like no oh. more. And I stuck by that for about. Right. Years. She's just like. Dude, if I were Alex, I would be considering this a self-defense situation right now. Honestly, keep buying in. Just like Tom, Tom. How autistic are you, chicka? Come on. Get the get the fuck out. <laughs> Year and a half. I just feel like Kratom, and then with Kratom, I can like, Tom. Uh, Tom. Uh, Tom. <laughs> like, and Tom's <laughs> laughing. But yeah, dude, man, that's a fucking crazy ass fucking life you've lived. And you're old now? Uh, 35. <laughs> What's up, food shops? What? <laughs> I have a very oh. important question, an extremely important question. What's that? How oh do you how do you permanently close the polls in your chat? Like every single time it pops up, like it just pops up way too often. I have to click right. the little like three button thingies in order to close the poll things. But like it just pops up so often, like it's so obnoxious. Like how do I like close it permanently? It's so annoying. I don't know. Right, I'll, I'll, I'll let you guys discuss this, uh, Tom. Wait, wait, food shops one. Wait. <laughs> All up. <laughs> Man, you talk about your, your crazy wife. Dude, you should just fucking write a book or at least make like a video series talking about your encounters. This is like, I thought about it. There's way there even like the drug stories are way better. Like the the stories about like the life before all of that shit is the there's a lot of wild stuff going into that. There's a there's a video on my channel if you want to if you're interested. But those videos are even better. I think it's called the dog poop stories story or something like that. Um, it's just like five or six videos ago. Um, that's a, okay. a wild story right there. I will take. It's a, a wild story. Another, another wild story, story recommendation from like, Tom invested in the story like it was like watching like a really good movie i was like engaged in every step and it's like kind of rare because my attention always just kind of hurts so crazy ass fucking story man but i'm glad that you're healthy and out there oh yeah the dog poop fight or, like, or whatever it is that fucking <laughs> yeah. what? i've seen that yeah, video yeah. It, man. that is a wild yeah, story isn't it tom wait a minute sure. oh you agree food shops why are you so awkward what that wasn't awkward I, I had a really important question that i really wanted to ask you and like, dude, like, it's so annoying. Like, dude, okay, or do you have an automated, like, like bot or something that keeps on asking? Also, why is this Alex dude, like, still in the chat? Like, why do you have just random calling people from the chat, like, just coming in and, like, literally, like, just calling randomly? Like, you just let anybody in these days? Like, like, come on, dude. Like, Bro, I let you in. Yeah, yeah, but I'm not just some, some random nobody. Like, like, what the fuck? He's not a random nobody. Huh? Who is he? He's playing with fire. He's got... Uh, who is he? Who is that guy? I don't know. Also, like... Bro, okay, okay. So, so, so <laughs> you have three dots, the close poll thing, right? So when you close the polls, um, he's got hundred and seventy thousand uh, subscribers on YouTube. Boring. Okay, so close the poll thing, right? <laughs> so when it comes to the um, close the poll thing, uh, it 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 has the um, how do you close the polls permanently? Is there any like YouTube? You can't. Just permanently just <laughs> you can't close it. Why? Wait, oh. where did this food shops go? <laughs> Why can't you? Like, dude, okay. Because. Is there is there any way for me to like just like permanently okay, I don't know, dude. What loser? So how do you like how do you like permanently like the stream? Like how do you automate liking the stream every single time I come in so then it stops asking me then? You can't. 
Um, also, Neon Gutters 2020, that person who keeps on saying, Okay, Mo, I can't believe I loved all that drug talk. Dude, shut the fuck up, loser. Nobody wants you in the chat anyway. Also, you never donated a single time to Tom, so nobody wants you in the chat anyway, okay? I see you, okay? At least the person who donated $4.20 said Tom, okay? Like, like at least that person donated something, okay? Thank also, you, Aris, yeah, for the yeah, exactly, one. okay? All right. Also, Tom, I come in providing you content all the time, okay? Think about all the drama I DM you, all right? I am the real content, okay? I am the content machine, all right? Um, yeah, all right. Have you seen, okay, I've been looking at your content thingies. Have you seen, um, uh, have you seen Sunday stuff? Yeah, we're, we're talking my title. Yeah, how yeah. five hour energies is she taking for this? Have you, yeah, have we haven't gone it? over it yet. No, we drank. Bro, we're it is literally 1.10 a.m. and you still haven't gone over it yet? It's 4.10 a.m. and no, we haven't gone over it. Okay, why the fuck do you sleep so late? Why do you do that? I don't, I sleep early. You sleep, wait, do you work like a night shift? A day shift, night shift? This, do do? this is my night shift. Okay, all right. You, um, listen. Um, yo, his coverage of it is actually, like, unhinged. Like, actually unhinged. I covered it, and I'm telling you right now, um, I'm gonna be watching it from chat, but, like, cover it, and I'm, like, just, like, I'm, I'm just, like, it was just so unhinged. But anyway, yeah, I would love to talk it, about it with you afterwards, like, it's, it's just so unhinged. Anyway, um, that's it. Okay, see ya. Uh... Jesus Christ. Jackie Chan, get him. <laughs> yeah, who chops, uh, Mog Tom there? Jesus Christ, that was, uh, that was rough.